Okay. The purpose of this video is twofold, threefold. Really, it's primarily twofold. Um, number one, uh, I want to commemorate what's you know possibly a historic event. Talk about it a little bit. Talk about my feelings about it, and then also talk simply, you know, frankly about some changes uh, that I've made to my channel, and that I'll probably be making in the future. Okay, a little bit of a heavier video, which is the way that it all went down. Um, the first thing that we want to talk about is is uh, JSX. JSX has apparently made the decision to leave YouTube uh, in a quite dramatic way over the last couple of days. You know, he had took off all his content uh, offline uh, and then had two two or three very cryptic videos about his exiting, you know, and, and in typical JSX fashion, you know, they're hard to watch, you know, they, you know, he's, he's got intensity and obviously, you know, the the reasons and the rationales for him leaving YouTube are probably quite personal. I, I'm not going to go too much into that other than to say that, um, you know, even though I made a video that was very critical of, of Jay and, you know, the effect that he was having on his particular community and concerns that I had with him or about him as a spiritual leader. Um, this, you know, that notwithstanding, you know, I did want to say that I'm incredibly saddened to hear that JSX, you know, was leaving YouTube. Um, you know, what do you call, what do you call, like, you know, if, it, if a fan of the Grateful Dead is a deadhead, what do you call, I mean, I love JSX, I'm a subscriber, was a subscriber, and, uh, you know, was a huge aficionado, I mean, there's a reason why I called this man consistently, the Captain Beefheart of New Age Shamans. That's not an insult. That's not an insult. That's actually the highest, one of the highest compliments or accolades I think I've ever hoisted or foisted upon an individual. Though I had many differences with his approach, I had very, you know, many concerns with, you know, what was going on with him. You know, I really do want people to know that I really think that the best way to visualize or to understand our relationships with other people is to understand us all is brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles, mothers and fathers, cousins, you know, and in-laws, you know, we're all related. So even though I made many video, made a video that was critical of Jay, you know, in you know, a lot of ways, you know, he is, you know, like an uncle to me. And I feel his loss from our world profoundly. Um, he wasn't just entertaining. I thought many of the things that he said were very profound. You know, I've often said that these people... Jay Essex, Randy Kramer, Shane, Corey Good, Simon Parks, Stuart Wardlow, all these individuals, though I do not, Bob Lazar, though I don't believe in the factual truth of their story. Look, I don't believe in the factual truth of any of their stories. That doesn't change the fact that they're family. And sometimes we talk about family because we have to talk about family because of the effect it has on other family members, because you know family. Okay? So Jay Essex has left, and I feel the loss, and I, I undoubtedly will continue to feel the loss moving forward. Okay? Uh, you know, Jay Essex is one of those guys. Some people tuned in and got it, some people didn't. I'm not, you know, believe you me, I'm not a believer. When it comes to Jay Essex, I don't think that, you know, he was anything other than this amazing individual putting incredibly bombastic and revelatory information on the Internet with, you know, an incredibly Elon and Anwi that was all his own. His all, you know, Anwi is not the right word, but, you know, a very unique message and very unique messenger. I don't think anyone could deny that. So I, I note his past, you know, his, his passing. I note him leaving YouTube as a profound, you know, impact. But, you know, I, it, it reminded me that it was a catalyst for a thinking process that will move on to, you know, this, the second stage of what we're going to talk about, um, which is changes that I made to my YouTube video because, you know, Jay, it was also, it was a life lesson watching Jay kind of, go through the process that he went through on YouTube. 
I think it's fair to understand that, you know, Jay Essex was, you know, had a, has a message as being a super psychic and a very incredible mythology and personal mythology behind them. But on YouTube, you know, he really, you know, had his, got up to 3,000 subscribers quite quickly. Um, and, with, you know, based on the uniqueness of, of him, you know, and I think really based on the gift that he brought to this space. But I think what you saw happen with Jay is that, you know, YouTube kind of, you know, YouTube, it's this thing, you know, where, you know, all of a sudden, you know, you come online, you make a, you have a, a thought, you have an idea, you think that'll make a good video, you make a good video. And, you know, it's a little bit, it's a little addicting, you know, or it can be. And I think with Jay and maybe what I thought saw with my, happening with myself is there's a temptation to always say, I got another thing to say to the people. I got another thing to say to the people. I got another thing to say to the people. And especially if you are like Jay may have been, and I certainly feel sometimes somewhat socially isolated, meaning that, I, you know, you exist in a world I can reach online. I can go online like many of you probably experience and talk to other people who think about new age shamans and, you know, cyberpunk Wicca and these thoughts and these ideas, you know what I mean? And, you know, reincarnation in the realm of, of the new sphere of cyber technologies or whatever. You know, these, these, these things of the history, real history of Alistair Crowley and his effect on industrial music. You know, you don't see people like that you can just have those conversations with every day on the street. At least I don't. But going online, you can access that community and you can feel that access to that community profoundly. And it can be a little bit addicting. I think what you saw happen with Jay was, you know, going online more and more, you know, three or four posts a day, you know, rambling. Um, uh, a lot of personal shit out there, a lot of personal energy going back and forth, you know, and it was just, you know, he might have spun out a little, you know. Certainly, I don't want to see that here, but, you know, what it really reminded me is to remind myself this one. I th was thinking about J. Essex leaving YouTube. One thing that I wanted to say and speak about is that, you know, it's very important to note that J. Essex leaving YouTube is not J. Essex passing away, right? And that's, you know, look, J. Essex passing away is a theme and a motif with J. Essex, so I'm not trying to imply anything other than the simple, simplest understanding of what I just said. You know, Jay Essex leaving YouTube is not Jay Essex disappearing from planet Earth. Um, it's, it could be a different stage of your life. You know, the point there being is that YouTube is not the totality of our existence, though it might feel like it is sometimes. And that's an excellent lead into my next point about changes that I'm going to be doing in my channel and changes that I've already have done. Um, YouTube is not the totality of existence. The fact of the matter is that I'm very interested in what I'm doing on YouTube. It's been a very exciting chapter, new chapter in my life. I've told people that opening up this YouTube channel a couple months ago was my 40th birthday present to myself. After years of being a subscriber, a aficionado of YouTube, a real fan of YouTube, scratch my head, taking notes, I thought to myself, I'm going to go for it, right? Well, the concerns there are, you know, you're entering into a public space. And especially if you're entering into a public space talking about sensitive subjects like spirituality or sensitive subjects like people's theories or thoughts about conspiracy theories or real politics, you know, you run the risk of angering some people. And as we know, you can control what your intent is. You can control what you hope will happen or what you desire to have happen on your channel, but you really can't decide what will. As many people know, I did a recent video on the flat earth. The fact of the matter is that I may have been engaging somewhat in clickbaiting, meaning this. Um, I had, Was it a subject that I was particularly fascinated with or by interested in? No, but I chose it as the linchpin or the kind of nexus or the world in which I was going to have another discussion or an overarching discussion about conspiracy theory and conspiracy theorists. 
But that's not how it works. You know, you put out a video and you know the hope is, and I'll, I won't lie. The fact of the matter is that oftentimes I'll find myself thinking things like, how do I get more subscribers? How do I get more people to see my videos? Am I making an impact? How can I make a bigger impact? That guy's got his videos got 3,000 hits. And my videos only got 300. Whoa, come on. I don't want to be here. I want to be there. But watching Jay, I realized something. And watching his exit from YouTube, I realized and remembered something. You know, I am not a full-time conspiracy theory researcher. There is, though there is nothing wrong with that career path. I am not a professional YouTube broadcaster or content creator, though there is nothing wrong with that career path. The fact of the matter is this, is that I am a business professional whose primary job in life is to stay alive and stay productive so that I can continue to care for and help care for and help and, and, and continue to enjoy my children and my friends and my family, right? My real life. And I realized I was running a risk when I started seeing the fact that the Flat Earth video, and then I just want to make another thing very clear. Though I have made decisions that were prompted after I made the Flat Earth video, I want to make it very clear to people that I don't think the Flat Earthers ran me out of town. They didn't go crazy. They didn't go nuts. Though they had some of them had very strong words to add in my comment section of my Flat Earth video. No one, you know, it wasn't that they did anything. They didn't start a harassment campaign. They haven't hounded me. You know, they, they haven't bombed my other channels with negative, my other videos with other negative comments. You know, nothing happened other than their a, a presence of new voices who were kind of opposed to what I was saying or maybe not in so much concert or agreement with my my other reactions I've been seeing from other people based on other content that I put up on YouTube, right? Their emotions made me realize saying that like, look, you know, if you cast your net real wide, CW Chanter, you know, don't be surprised if you pull up a couple of sharks. Not to characterize anything, anybody in the, or the, the flat earth community as being excessively aggressive, but I just realized something that, you know, look, many of my videos may be videos that had important things that I said or important things that were for were important for me to express or say, but you know, the fact of the matter remains because I'm not a full-time researcher, right? And because this is not my career and because I haven't woken up this morning by saying, you know what? The most important thing to me is me fighting the good fight against anti-Semitism in the new age community or addressing a homophobic slant to some people's spiritual dimensions, whatever the case may be, because I'm not fully committed in that arena and because I've got a life that I got to protect, the fact of the matter is I may have said things online that may have been worth saying, but maybe really weren't for me to say. So I made the decision to take down several videos, primarily based on them being the most kind of political uh, aggressive, but really because they addressed those subject matters that were at the nexus of the most potential danger, okay, for me as an individual and for me as an individual who wants to keep on producing content for YouTube. And the fact of the matter is this, if my wife turns to me and says, Ben, okay, the fit has hit the sham. The phone's fucking ringing with death threats, right? My email's blowing up. Yada yada, and did you just tell me that someone just sent us a photo of where of an aerial shot of where our kids go to school over out of Google Earth? There won't be any more justifying producing YouTube content. I will just have to go away because I have no desire to do the things that would make it that I would make money on YouTube, right? monetizing videos, shilling, production values, those things that, you know, specifically designed to be, quote-unquote, that's entertainment, woo! Book, and also, the dirty little secrets, they're fucking money in this business, god damn it, I'm telling you, all y'all, watch more people leaving YouTube. 
watch more people realizing that, oh, shit, you know what I mean? You know, great Chirons and a copy of Final Cut Pro can get you off to a good start. But the fact of the matter is it's probably not going to get you out your mama's basement. Not that there's anything wrong with mama's basement. Right? Also, I took down some videos because I thought it was just nasty. I was negative. I was snarky. Or maybe I didn't know exactly what I was talking about. But really, the bottom line is this, is when the potential allegations that you're making about people are not that they're being irresponsible with their spirituality or not that they're taking things into consideration or not the fact that maybe you think that maybe, just maybe they've got an underlining, you know, mental situation. But the allegation is that someone is a neo-Nazi sympathizer, a vehement anti-Semite or a potentially violent individual, that's a whole other kettle of fish, right? With a whole bunch of other potential consequences. So while I haven't changed maybe my thoughts or my beliefs about certain videos that I've made, I have made a decision about the wisdom of having those thoughts and sentiments out there. Bottom line, it might be, very, it might be a lot better and easier for me and more important for me to stick to those things that were the original inspiration of this vi of this whole video channel, which is spiritual beliefs and kind of my propagation, my understanding of, of what I'm calling the New Age diaspora. You know, I believe that, you know, New Age philosophy, thinking, spirituality in a way has, has come to an evolutionary point where we could see it in a historical, integrated historical context, appreciate it the same, talk about it the same as having a history, having a historical development, talk about the development of these ideas and, and spirituality, talk about the pros and cons of various approaches and beliefs, right? Talk about that stuff. And the fact that matters that I started talking about the conspiracy theory stuff, because really what's just it's become an integrated corollary, you know, it's at the same nexus, you know, New Age, the, the, the Venn diagram that describes new, new Age thoughts and beliefs and those that describe a, a proponents are fishing out as a con, what's generally called conspiracy theory world, right? They overlap so profoundly, you know what I mean? That that's why I start talking about those things. But maybe, just maybe, I should have put the guards on a little bit faster and said, you know what? Um... It's one thing to talk about these conspiratorial situations, the Ruiner's uh, interaction with the Illuminati, Randy Kramer's interaction with the secret uh, space program that brings him to Mars, Corey Good on Guy on TV, that there might be a difference between talking about those things or those conspiracies in a historical context or and the difference between that and then talking about those theories or conspiracies that might involve people that are really kind of neo-Nazis, you know what I mean? Or just people that would just be the kind of people that would go crazy, take things personal, and dox. Go crazy, take things personal, and, and, and make it personal, and, and have an agenda. Do you know what I mean? Or just, you know, just make life difficult. Um, so, you know, so I made the decision to take down certain videos that were of a very political nature, that I thought were more of a political nature. I left one up that I thought was, the conversation was, was such, that the tenor of the conversation was such that we could, that we were having good talks and good discussions, but it wasn't necessary to remove even though it was political. But certain other videos that involved, you know, coming really close to the nexus or commentary upon what I do think exists, which is a vehement, you know, you know, stripe of anti-Semitism that exists within the New Age community and New Age world that people need to think about, need to talk about and realize, dude, I said it before and I said it again, the Nazis before they were Nazis were hippies. Look at their magazines. Look at the research of Joseph Farrell. Look at the research of Peter Levanta. Look at the research, uh, research of Michael Moynihan, uh, and, you know, with books that have been printed by, uh, you know, uh, Adventures in Limited Press, books that have been developed, uh, printed up and, and produced by Feral House. And you'll see that they'll tell you, if, they, if you talk about the his, his, historicity of the Nazi party, they were vegans, they were vegetarians, they were profoundly interested in Tibetan Buddhism, profoundly interested in Eastern spirituality, profoundly, profoundly interested in the Tarao, nudists, nature worshippers, breathinarianism, right? All that good stuff. Sound familiar? Sound like people you know? Hitler was a sensitive man who loved his dog, right? I mean, and a vegetarian, right? You know, it's a potentiality. The hippie doesn't fall far from the Holocaust, unfortunately. 
the same people, the same ideas and thoughts that can lead us to realizing that this world is illusion can also sometimes make us say we're going to do crazy things because whatever. Don't want to, you know, reopen the problem that I'm trying to trying to change. So maybe politics are not the greatest thing to talk about, and there's certain areas that I shouldn't go into, not because they're not worth talking about, or not because they shouldn't be talked about, but because the fact of the matter is I'm not an investigative journalist. I don't necessarily have the time and resources to give the information or outlay my arguments or support my arguments with the same kind of evidentiary support that might be necessary to make a truly persuasive argument about it. And as I said before, I got to live here. This YouTube channel, though it might mean a lot to me, and it might even mean a lot to you, is not my life. It really isn't. It really isn't. And I'm not saying that to say, you know, it's not my life, so give me a break. I'm saying it's not my life because I have to remind that myself that because it's very tempting when you see that your voice or your message or your words have reached, that you see X number of thousands, you know, people have viewed it. You know what I mean? You know, and it can be profound and it can be profoundly entertaining and profoundly gratifying, but at the same time, it can be profoundly scary. So when I saw the YouTube uh, video that I did on the Flat Earth start to attract the attention of people that probably didn't give two fucks about the fact that, no, 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 don't worry, on this channel we've already established that I have a kind of ramshackle, funny way of talking about things, I'm snarking, I'm sarcastic, and I'm this, that, or the other thing. If you're a stranger and you come to a, to a video that you think is about a subject that you profoundly care about, that you're profoundly interested in, or you think is profoundly important, you don't care that the guy, you know, cutting up on camera, you know, maybe in, in many ways, mocking or making fun of or suggesting that it's mockable what you believe that that's copacetic and cool to you a lot of people in the comment section were you know easy going you know hey we disagree no your premise your theory is just wrong and then some of them were like you know a q cia show boy it's just the way that it goes not that that was the primary motivation for me to taking down that video or any other video it was really jay it was a wake-up call to say whoo you know whoa Maintain a sense of balance, and like I said, you know, once it's gone too far, it's gone too far, and it's really impossible, if not impossible, to bring it on back. That's just the way that it goes. So you got to be proactive, and hopefully I'm getting this tour, you know, getting here early enough to say, okay, so here are the videos that, you know, came down, and, and I'm sorry about that, Okay. Also, one of the most profound things that I'm sorry about that is, number one, there was a lot of good information I thought was in there. You know, unfortunately, due to my style, due to my technique, kind of taking everything all together and just kind of going off improv style, you know, both both barrels boom in your face, is that oftentimes, you know, there's a lot of good stuff that's mixed in with the crap. You know what I mean? And it's hard to edit it out because I'm not a great editor and I don't really edit. Um, so the fact of the matter is this, is that, that some of the stuff, those are videos that might, have, and maybe I, I'll have an opportunity to come back to, rewatch, re-listen, re-explore, and maybe pull out those good ideas and come back with those good ideas in a more professional or just more, you know, cohesive way, not mixed in with, you know, random allegations of this guy or that guy being a douchebag who's bringing down the whole system from the inside, whatever the case may be. Um... I've always kept my comment sections on, and I've always said that the comment section, the stuff, the information was discussed in the comment section was as valuable as the video presentation itself. And I do believe that's true. People know that there have been other videos that I've chosen to take down, and I've gone to great lengths to try and pre preserve or, pre you know, save those comments. I haven't destroyed the videos. I merely have taken them offline. So the fact of the matter is that the comment sections, to a degree, are kind of frozen in time and frozen and preserved. If you know you made a great contribution or a great comment to a channel or to a particular video of mine that you would like to have that text back, if you didn't save it yourself, contact me, reach out to me, email me, or send me a press, private message on YouTube. I might very well be able to facilitate that. Also, I've thought about maybe experimenting with take, make, making a WordPress blog just to save and preserve the comment sections. Though there's sections that, of personal comments that I've made that I would probably redact or reduce for the same reason that I've decided to reduce or to redact certain videos, i.e. a politically incorrect statement or a profound statement or an aggressive statement about a particular political ideology or political or 
personal or philosopher or thinker, I might very well edit that out. But, you know, like I said, people have produced a lot of content in the comment section below, and I don't take it lightly that when I take off those videos or I take those videos offline, when I make that decision from above, as it were, up here at upper management, right, um, that that does affect the fact that you took, if you took the time and effort to put something in there, you know, I don't take it lightly, the fact that I'm, you know, then all of a sudden deleting that content essentially as well. So I will make attempts to try and preserve the comment section or try and bring out good things in the comment sections that have happened. One thing I want to say at this point, talk about the contributions to the comment sections. I don't know if you're aware of this, but there's a commenter by the name of Pilgrim16, who I shit you not, is attempting to write a novel in the comment section of my videos. Now, when I say this, I, you know, just, you know, this is not me complaining. This is not me doing a boogie 256 going, the comment section is full of people talking about things that don't involve the comment section. Oh, YouTube, you got to fix comments. There's too many. There's Schwarzenegger and Adolf Hitler and Barack Obama. No, that's not me saying that. You know, this guy literally, this guy or gal, I have no idea what planet this individual came from, but they are writing. They are writing, I swear to God, you know, a novel in the comment section of various sections of the videos. And some of the videos I've decided to take online, I mean, there's just there's just chapters and verse that this guy has, has chosen to written. Basically, this individual has decided to take, I, I think other people have tried it before, where they've had these very long kind of narrative comments that are beautiful. But Pilgrim 16, really, I, sh I shit you not, brothers and sisters, to the degree that you see the guy, the guy or gal still comment, Please, you know, read those things because it's like a kind of cyberpunk meets Dada free expression novel. Is doing it's. I mean, it's creative writing of 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 a unique internet based strange direction, uh, metaphorical myth references and references and references upon references. Uh, incredible stuff. I mean, that shit needs to be saved. I mean, so we're gonna have to find some way to resurrect that shit back up. I hope you, Pilgrim 16, I hope you're saving these things to a PDF because this shit is worth putting up somewhere as well as underneath my blog, underneath my, my videos. And I'm very, very impressed or honored by the fact that you would decide to think that the comment section of my videos was a worthy enough space to put so much creative writing. The guy really, the guy or gal is really doing wackadoo stuff. And there's been other commentators too that that have, have put profound information, YouTube links, sites, uh, references to other PDFs, uh, in those other comments of videos I've taken down. I don't take that lightly. I'm thinking about that. I'm not being cavalier about it. I am doing what I can to to back up and save um, data independently so that those contributions are preserved. And obviously, there can be an ongoing discussion about whether or not you want your comment preserved on a WordPress blog or whether you'd prefer it just go the way of the dodo if the dodo has gone anywhere at all have i covered it all have i said everything i needed to say more things some of the videos when i was going through and deciding to take down videos and i was thinking in my, my head of the criteria and the criterion that i was applying to why a particular video would come down or why a particular video would stay up um some videos came down that weren't necessarily political, uh, politically charged, or I thought that I was going to receive any sort of kind of cuckoo crazy blowback uh, from the people I was talking about or the parties concerned. But I still wanted to take them down because it wasn't the best me. And the way that I approached the subject or the way I was talking about the individual, though it might not result in any sort of blowback to me, could certainly be perceived by those individuals as blowback to themselves and or was just a rude and nasty way to describe things. Who am I talking about? Okay, number one, the first video that I did on Corey Good, I took down. It was the it was a bad video. Um, number one, it was totally unfocused. I basically what had happened was that if people remember at the nexus of when this channel began, one of the great debates that was happening or kind of unfolding before our eyes in the Project Avalon Forum, on YouTube, wherever, on you know, on various people's blogs and whatever, was this kind of competition that was happening between Shane the fucking ruiner and Corey Mr. Good, right? The fact that, you know, that that there was 
you know, these guys were being set up as oppositional characters for various reasons, the, the hi histor history of which can be seen in the videos I made describing them, as well as being preserved forever and a day on the Project Avalon forums and iRise forums and all that other great, fantastic bullshit, you know what I mean? So I made a video about Corey Good because basically I made a video about Shane the Ruiner. I felt like, oh, gee, you talk about one, you better talk about the other. But I had done a lot of research on Shane the Ruiner. I read that fucking blog. I read that fucking thing. You know what I mean? Like I was a high school English teacher, right? I read that fucking whole thing. God damn it. Give it an F. No. It is what it is. But then I made a video about Corey Good. Fact of the matter is I didn't do the exact same amount of research that I did on, on Shane the Runar. I didn't have the same motivation. It was a different motivation and the video showed it. The video was disjointed. It was unfocused. And people commented in the comment section below and said profoundly and noticed one thing. It really had very little to do with Corey Good. The first comment on the video was as follows. Paraphrasing a bit. Dude. I thought this video was about Corey Good, not Alfred Lambermont Weber. The video about Corey Good was taken down primarily, not just because I think I gave short shrift to Corey Good, just because there was no real shrift to Corey Good. It just wasn't a, really about that. It was a disjointed affair based on the fact that I had gotten a you know fever for the flavor of a potato chip. I discovered that I liked making videos about on YouTube, and I was thinking about what was the next thing that I was going to be able to talk about, maybe that was going to attract attention or be kind of developing a flavor or a vo voice over here. And what ended up happening is that there was a big section where I just basically fucking go off on Alfred Lambert Weber. So let me take this opportunity to say, I'm sorry. And to explain and show the fact that this, the comments I made about Alfred Lambert Weber were not A concentrated effort or blowback or attempt to hurt him, right? I'm not, you know, in league with Satan. I'm not, you know, uh, operating on the behest of AI black goo. I'm really not. You know what I mean? I'm an actual individual, you know, just, I'm a human being just like, you know, anyone else. And I've got human being problems. And so I'll tell you, I gave the guy a fucking slam. I wasn't fair to Alfred Lemon my Weber. I kind of came off on him. And if you fact, if you look at the video that I made before I made the video about Corey Good, there's a whole thing where I go off and basically say that Shane should be held morally or ethically responsible because he was he was saying things that would, in effect, have an upset effect on people like Alfred Lemon my Weber. Here's the thesis. Uh, Shane the Ruiner knows that he's bullshitting. He has created this, concocted this wonderful, fantastic story about, you know, talking to giants and the Illuminati and there's elders and there's, you know, you know, vampire blood rituals and there's Anu and there's all this fucking bullshit. And he's saying that in a world where some people, because of various underlying factors and conditions, nature and nurture, their personality, maybe some problems they might have take that shit just way too fucking seriously and that he should be held morally responsible and ethically responsible for saying things in a world where he knows that some of his audience members would be profoundly affected by it. That's a nice sentiment to say. And I specifically say, and you're saying things and I see Alfred Lemar Weber on YouTube now and he seems very, very, very upset and that's un un unconscionable. That's unacceptable, bro. That's nice. Maybe a little bit condescending, right? Maybe a little bit patronizing, but but an okay sentiment. And then the video I make about Corey Good, I put Alfred Lemmer or whatever basically on trial and say, you're a fucking lunatic. You know what I mean? You got no idea what the fuck you're talking about. You're a crazy individual, yada, yada, yada. Why did I do it? What had he done that deserved such ire, such aggression? Such nastiness. I'll tell you. Because I want to prove to you that I'm not AI black goo. That I'm not some COINTEL pro psyop maniac. That I am a human being with human being motivations just like you. I'll tell you 100% the truth. And you go ahead and ask yourself if this resonates with you as true. Whether you think this is the kind of story that someone would just make up. Or if this makes 
total perfect sense. The fact of the matter is that the high crime that Mr. Weber committed that made me go off and go crazy on him was as follows. Alfred Lambermont Weber failed to, number one, immediately acknowledge upon first email contact, my genius. He failed to respond to my email um, within an appropriate amount of time with the appropriate amount of praise, pleasure, and candor, as well as an immediate uh, invitation to talk with him online on his very large forum. I sent him an email, dear Mr. Weber, like you, I'm an attorney, like you, this, that, I did some research about the AI Black Goo, yada, 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 sis, boom, ba, check it out. And the email response I got back was not what I was expecting, which was what I was expecting was what I felt that I deserved, right? You know, dear Mr. Chanter, thank God you have shown up. Clearly, you're the most brilliant individual ever contact me. Thank God I have someone, to, you know, this, you know, this that, and the other thing, you know. You know, in close, please find, you know, one round trip ticket to sit on the fucking Canadian Symposium of fucking International Human Rights of Peter Kling, whatever the fuck. I thought he was supposed to say or do. He failed to do it, and he also he didn't, he didn't a, a respond in an appropriate amount of time. What would have been an appropriate amount of time? Fucking immediately. Hey, I'm C.W. Chanter. I don't know if you got the memo, but I'm something special. Didn't you hear? Oh, I'm very important. You didn't know? You didn't realize? Well, fuck you. So not having been, you know, properly, having my ego properly stoked, not being treated like a million bucks because Alfred Lambermont Weber owes me, obviously, right? <laughs> that seems obvious to me, or at least seemed obvious to me at the time, or must have seemed obvious to me at the time because I got pissed off and went fucking off. Gee, that was great. We'll never know what could have been. We'll never know if I had held my tongue, hold on, send him a second follow up email, this, that, thing, or just giving the guy a little bit amount of time to get to the email or whatever. Maybe we would have had an entirely different world experience. All of us. Woulda, coulda, shoulda. So I brought that video down. And I'm glad I had this opportunity to say, I'm sorry, dude. Really, I am. And in a world where we're all mothers and fathers and brothers and sisters and uncles and cousins and nieces and nephews, you might not be ancient, but you're sure shit older than me. I don't know, dude. I think as an elder, you're going to have to fucking take this one on the chin. That's what the books have said to me. That's what the youth will probably say to me at one point. Not that you're required to. Yada, yada. It is what it is. So that video came down. I don't know. I might take down the other Corey Good video as well. Why? Well, the, you know, the fact of the matter is this is having learned what I learned and having experienced what I experienced with the amount of negative feedback and commentary I got from, you know, some of the flat earthers. I realize, you know, that um, that words do have an effect. And if I was a guy who would come up with, with a fantastic story or a fantastic tale, I might just prefer that if people think that I'm full of shit, they just keep that to themselves. I don't know. Maybe I'm going off on a tangent here. Maybe I'll stop myself right there. Okay, next apology. Miles Johnson. I took down one of the AI Black Goo videos because, quite frankly, there's a way to say things and you might be able to suggest or state things or possibilities in a certain way. There's good ways to say things and there's bad ways to say things. And it's okay, I think, for me to have said, you know, the fact of the matter is that Miles Johnson might be making decisions to book certain speakers or certain guests based on the fact that he knows and understands that uh, yada yada. It's advertisement. An attractive person is, is going to attract more clicks than an unattractive person or whatever.
but I didn't do that. I made it, you know, profoundly personal. And Miles Johnson, you know, puts these people on because he's a. That's because he's does this or Miles. It was it was just not the best way to express it. I think I could redo it better. I think I could do it in a way that doesn't burn as many bridges as it might wave to the other side of the shore and say, "Hey guys, look." And I want to say this to to people out there. You know, you can help me be a better person. Here's the fact of the matter: is you can help yourselves be better people too. You can increase the value of your of your discussions online, of your online symposium and your Google you know chats and all this stuff. You know, when we turn on the TV, sometimes it's bad when there's two when they set up political discussions as gladiatorial fights. Right, where it's the the red guy and the blue guy and the guy on the left and the guy on the right. <laughs> Simp, fool, jerk, know it all, whatever the case may be, and it's just, you know, a gladiatorial beatdown. But at the same time, I'm not aware of any other world where debate and discussion is defined by a unitary position and an entire panel of people that really, let's be honest, are all on the same fucking page. Why wouldn't you book on your symposium about artificial intelligence or artificial intelligence black goo a voice of dissent? You know, Mr. Weber, my criticism of you in the past may have been unfair and personal, but I don't think this is an unfair criticism. What world do we have where we have defendants but no plaintiffs? Plaintiffs but no defendants. Prosecutors but no defense attorneys. It makes no sense to me that you, knowing what you know about the law and the way the law, the law works as an adversarial structure designed to have man and woman, test man and woman, to have ideas bandied about and discussed, you know, with passion, and to also have opposing views. There's no fucking opposing views on any of these goddamn channels. None of these interviewers on, the, on these, on the high, on these uh, internet radio shows are asking really probing questions. There's no debate. There really is no debate. There is only presentation. There's only mono speech. You know, there's only interviews, right? Same thing over and over and over again. And the discussion doesn't move forward. So I'm taking this opportunity to take certain channel videos down that I didn't like, that I didn't like the way that they came out, or I just thought, too, excuse me, too rich for my blood. There have been people in the comment section before in various of my videos that have said, you know, you go after this guy, whatever, why don't you go over, why don't you go after Carrie Cassidy over Project Camelot? Dude, why don't you take a swing at Atticus? Dude. Why don't you do a whole video about Bill Ryan? There's no fucking way. There's no fucking way. It's too much trouble. It's more trouble than it's worth. It really is. And why do I say that? Because you can see that it's more trouble than it's worth. You can see these people being involved in active and prolonged, you know, disagreements that don't calm down and don't go away, but just still always seem to stay aflame. Not saying that it's any of those particular people's thoughts. Not saying that any of those particular people have done anything to me personally, have ever threatened me personally, or whatever. I'm just going about what everyone else says online. Anecdotal evidence. Take it as you will. Could be fair, could be unfair, could be right, could be wrong. But still, I think I would be foolish if I were to ignore all that information and we're just continuing to be cavalier and say, oh, this guy, this guy's a neo-Nazi sympathizer. This is not talking about any, of the, not talking about Carrie Cassie or, or Bill Ryan or any of those people, other people, you know what I mean? Um, it is what it is. So maybe I'm going to concentrate more on the spirituality. Maybe I'm going to concentrate more on those videos that maybe aren't going to get me the same number of hits as a more topical, current um, subject might. Not saying that I'm done talking about people, but I am saying that, that I'm probably done talking about the politics of people and those aspects of the conspiracy theory world because they're really not the ones, the things that I'm that interested in. Really, that's not what the purpose of this channel was to begin with in the first place. It was to talk about New Age spirituality, spirituality, even though I'm an atheist, I'm not an atheist, 
uh, how do I make sense of the fact that I, as an atheist, I tried to incorporate religion back into my world, this, that, and the other thing, it's a personal vlog, some of the videos are funny, some of the videos are profound, some of the videos are controversial, right? But the big lightning rod issues, oh, I think I'm going to be staying away from those ones, you know? So, it is what it is. Hopefully, I got everything discussed that I wanted to get discussed. Hopefully, I made all the apologies that I wanted to make, honestly. Alfred Lambert Weber, I'm sorry. Really. You know, I'm sorry. I fucked up. I fumbled the ball of communication. If anything about this video gets to you, this video gets to you, and you have a change of heart, I'd always be willing to talk to you and listen to you. Though I might not deserve the opportunity. It is what it is. Um, Miles Johnson, same way. The things I said, some of the things I said, I felt that I needed to say. Hey, you can hate on it, but the fact that the matter is you're as human as me, right? No one here is, is, is a good contender for the saint who walks the monstrous awards. It's just not the case, you know. We are all human, you know, but we can all do what we got to do in love. We, are, we can all do what we can do with love, you know. Also, the thing about the Flat Earth video is that I was so cavalier, for those who saw it, I was so cavalier and, um, holier than thou might even be the word for it. In my approach and my discussion and my dismissal of other people's points of views, beliefs, and knowledge. Honestly. How the fuck would I know if the earth is round or flat? That was part of my videos about that. And like I said, I'm going to come back to my videos. I think I can get the good stuff away from the dross. I think if I take an opportunity to look at some of the old videos, uh, we will. I will have an opportunity to go back and say, you know what? There was a good part. There was a not so hot part. Let's cut that part out. Or no, let's just basically create a new script. Let's do this. Let's do the other thing. Come up with something new. Maybe that'll work. Okay? But everything I do, I do out of love. I really, really do. I really do. I really do think that we're all brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles on planet Earth. I just, you know, and that's what I want to say. So hopefully I can go back, review those videos and say what I said or say what I had to say in a way that might not be so inflammatory, controversial or conflict oriented, even though I know for a fact this is not debatable. Working on a loose farm. Achoo! People love that louche. You do. If it bleeds, it bleeds. If I make a video called, I fuck Simon Swerdlow in the butt on this one, that's going to get a lot more hits than if I say, Simon Swerdlow, in review. That's a fact. That's a fact. If I come out here and I say, I'm about to tell you the truth about David Wilcox. Fuck that motherfucker. That's going to get a lot more hits than if I come out and say, David Wilcox's approach to the penal gland is both uh, problematic on a scientific and medical point of view, as well as profoundly misstating some ancient Hindu and Buddhist beliefs about saying, uh, take, for example, the rainbow body. That's, uh, you know what I mean? You know? And that's not just, I'm the same way. Believe you me, brothers and sisters. You know, there's a reason why I love J. Essex videos and tuned in all the time. What's he going to say next? Oh, sh that's crazy. Versus, you know, I don't watch that, mo mo that much Dolores Claiborne. Is that her name? Even maybe I should, you know what I mean? Um, it is what it is. So we'll wrap it up here. And I will say that I love you. And I hope you enjoyed this video. I, ho I hope this video had more import than just as a stopgap or as just an explanation video. You know, but dialogue is important to me. Oh, one of the videos I had to take down was the comment section video that was so awesome. That was so, I, also, some of these videos might come back, and you might also see me take a look at some of the other videos I did that I've kept up so far and say, you know, you know that ain't so hot. Also, if I talked about you personally in any of the videos that I've made, if I've said something about you that you say, you know what, dude, I please, that hurt. Could you 
Now, but I might very well take that video fucking down. You never know. So look forward to more psych experimentation. I think we're going to also start talking about music, maybe even. I don't know. It's my fuck. It's my party, and I'll party if I want to, man. It's my channel. We're going to have some fun here. But that's the point was to have some fun and understand. I got to understand. You might have gotten a lot of, you know, seeing me go after some people, and you might have known that I said a lot of good things that were very, very important or profound. I don't know. Maybe you're going to have to take some of those thoughts and ideas and run with them yourself because it is what it is. I got a life here. I got a good life. I really got a good life, and there's no way in hell. I'm sorry. I love y'all. But there's plenty of people pointing out plenty of fucked up things in the world, right? And the fact of the matter is, if I find myself on the tail end of this YouTube experience, having said to myself, well, that was a genius piece of work, right? The, the, the online trolls, the, the, the doxers, the douchebags, the real shit heels, the scary folk, they found you. They have your office number. They found you. They know where your kids go to school. They found you. They're harassing you. There's going to be no, wow, you know, going back after that. It'll just be a wrap. There'll be no justification. If this YouTube channel affects my livelihood, there'll be no justification. I get a lot out of it. I hope you do too. But there'll be no justification to the real world impact that it will have on my existence and the existence of my children's. You know, I'm a father. I got bigger things and bigger concerns to worry about other than just increasing my popularity or having people not think I'm a sellout or a shill, right? So if you think it was a real wuss maneuver to take out some videos or to take them offline, that's your truth, baby. You know, this comment section is on and open as well. We'll be on and open forever today, just like every other comment section. Though it's subject to change because there's more important things in the world. I love you and I want to preserve your your right to comment, and I want to preserve your right to have those comments preserved for antiquity, but at the same time, if it's the difference between maintaining my privacy, the sanctity of my life, or preserving your comment, your comment's getting the cut, right? That's what's up, because that's what's up, because that's what's up. Love all y'all. Listen, here's the other thing, dude. I said before, I said it again. I put it out there. If you are have different opinions about things than I do, right? Man, woman, or child. Let's get together in a Google Hangout. Let's do some other stuff. I really, the, I'm sick and tired of talking to just this this camera. I mean, the interaction with the comment section is beautiful, but really, you know, I'm, I'm dead serious. Like, eventually, I will get fucking bored. So if people really want to get anything out of the videos that I make, and yeah, I, you know, dude, I'll admit it. I have a healthy sense of self-ego. I have a healthy sense of self-import. Some of what some of that makes it very my my life very good. Some of that makes my life a little bit difficult for me and the people around me. Right? I am who I am. But having said that, it's got to be a little bit more interesting than that. So if people want you know want want you know have something to say or the thing themselves. Oh gee, maybe I'd start a YouTube channel too, dude. I will come and talk to you. I'll come talk to you if you got one subscriber. I'll come talk to you if you got zero subscribers. Honestly. I want out of this particular fucking box. Done talking about it. I want off of this goddamn channel and onto more channels. Other people are on other people's channels talking. People, no offense. No offense. Do you know what I mean? Does anyone really watch those three-hour videos, three or four-hour videos of people having a Google Hangout? Everybody on the same fucking page. It's a little bit of Skype interference. Figuring out the Skype interference. What? Do we lose Colleen again? Colleen? Oh, she's back. She's back. We've got... Blue Avian 1 on, on 2, and okay. And uh, oh, what were you saying? Yeah, I was just pointing out that a lot of the debate about the flat earth really bad. It's like, if we just open up our hearts, that's so true. You know, when you said that about opening up our hearts, I totally agree, because I'm the type of person who wants to have an open heart too. Me too. Me three. Me four. And they go on for three and a half hours of that bullshit. And when I say bullshit, I, that's a compliment too. Bullshit is amazing. You know, goji berries might be a super food, but without a doubt, bullshit is a super fuel. And no one can debate that point. No one can debate that point. It's factually accurate as a statement.
It really is. So if you find your rockets on your Google chats, or your, Google, your spiritual symposium, whatever the fucks, have it break it down a little, a little boring. If you need super fuel, I got some bullshit. Everything I do, I do it for you. I love you. I hope you were entertained. I really do love you guys. The saga continues. Videos come up. Videos come down. J Essex left YouTube. That hurt. That was like, no, 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 no. I felt that way like I felt about David Bowie done. I felt, I felt J Essex leaving YouTube as a palpable presence. Departing. I made three videos, all of which I had to delete because I got too crazy emotional. You know what I mean? Like, come on, Jay. You know, fuck, man. Seriously. You know, and honestly, I feel. You know what I mean? I'm a super secret empath. Talk about super secret. Right? Ah. Uh, ooh, ooh. In honor of Jay555. 